Right. Now, um, the hairs around the edge of the abdomen have sort of folded in, so I'm going to brush them out a little bit. So I can get the glue onto the actual exoskeleton and not onto the hairs so much. Now let's look at the thorax here. Yeah, there's a bit of dried gut in the middle here that'll be good for getting glue on it. Okay. Um, using my clear gel and I'm going to put see it's flowing, yes, yeah, so I'm going to put a little glue around the edge and then a little bit in the middle I always put glue on both pieces that I'm attaching. I find that it sticks a lot better that way. I'm just putting it around the edge, a little bit in the middle. Okay, I pin this nice and straight. Good. And I'm going to use pins to prop up the abdomen. Now, hopefully, this will line right up. I'm making up the pins here. Wow, that looks so much better. It's really greasy. I want this abdomen straight. It's a little crooked. I'm going to put some props on these wings to hold it in place. There we go. Well, that looks really good. And I'm just going to gently push it, move it around a little bit to, to glue to adhere. And I can see if it's straight by the way this taper comes down. That looks really good. I can see the juncture here a little bit, but I can brush some of the hairs over it. Boy, I don't think I want to even mess with it. That looks great. We'll let that dry. All right, now I've kept the broken off antenna in the humidifier to keep it soft because if these are dry, it's very easy to break them. Uh, so I need to figure out which way this antenna goes. There's the center vein is a ridge down the middle and it sticks out on one side. It sticks out on this side. So I look at this antenna to see where the vein is. It's on the bottom. And so this one I want in the same position. Yeah, just like that. Okay, so a little bit of glue on the base. Remember I move the base of the antenna into position matching the other one. I want to get a good amount on there so it has something to grab. There. And then Try and think of where the antenna is going to lie and put a pin there to 
erase it. And then I put a little glue on the antenna base. Okay. And then gently set it on the post. Try and support it. part does take a bit of patience. Ooh, that's close. I just want it to look symmetrical with this one. It needs to flop over just a little bit. Oh. Boy, that's about as close as I can get. Wow. A little more. They raise the end a little bit. Gotta move it on the base just a little bit. Raise the edge up a little. Tilt it a little bit more. Wow, that is good. Okay, just going to leave it. All right, now, this antenna should be dry. The last thing I need to do is reattach the leg. And that broke off.
abdomen has dried. Looks really good. Okay, I have the leg here. Now, I'm going to put a dot of glue where the leg joins. And these are very furry. So I need to sort of work the glue into the joint. And then get the leg in the right side up. And get it to stick. Now I want to, um, maybe I should just leave this upside down until the leg dries. I want to make sure it looks right from the top. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it upside down until it dries. It should just take a minute. Okay, now that leg is dry. Very nice. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I reattach that abdomen and uh, so I'm going to gently fluff the hairs. Just touch it with the brush. Because they do come loose pretty easily. There's some along the edge of the wing here, too. Alright. Finished. Now the labels, these are captive rays, so it just says Madagascar ex ova, raised from an egg, 2023, Ergema matria, male. And female, same thing. That is a really exceptionally nice pair. Yeah, really nice. All right, now I got to put them in the drawers. So this is my teaching collection. Actius and Argema, and uh, you can see that the um, let's put the males side by side. It's a nice specimen, but it's faded because they do fade. Now look at the difference.
just lost a lot of the vibrancy and the color. It's still a nice specimen, but uh, fresh one's a big improvement. really good. Yep, big improvement. Okay, now we'll get the female to the other box. This is my other drawer of mostly females. I have an Isis this is one I would love to get a nice specimen of. This one's pretty bad, but they're very hard to come by. Um, this female still looks pretty good, but uh, the new one is still an improvement. This one, I actually have the eggs on a little card. You can see I've got some eggs out of the abdomen. Her abdomen's kind of shabby. It's, it's a bit faded, but still a nice specimen. But this new one is definitely an improvement. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to put a couple of small pins on either side of the abdomen to keep it from spinning because uh, this box does get moved around sometimes. This is um, female Dubernardi, uh, female uh, Menas, female Celine, uh, female Gracia Isabella, Spanish Moon Moth. This is just a model of a um, Basanti. It's not a real one. It's a super rare moth. Uh, someone I know, an artist, Red Wilitsky, actually painted this. And um, from a specimen, from a photograph from Dave Rolf in England, he's got a, a, a real one. And she um, sells these. Uh, company's called Moth and Myth um, in Seattle. Um, she makes beautiful reproductions. She and her team make beautiful reproductions of uh, moths and butterflies. Uh, Moth and Myth. All right. Happy with that.